What's going on guys and welcome back to Northern Valley. This episode we are kind of focusing on the final touches of our downtown skyline. So after this episode I really don't think we're going to be adding any more tall buildings. But uh, you will see how this kind of developed and also we named this downtown area and you'll see that toward the end of the episode in the live portion. But before we jump into this timeline, or time lapse rather, I want to explain why there was not a video out uh, last week, and that's for good reason. I actually went out and finally purchased a 500 gig SSD, and I had to install that into my computer, and then of course, optimize all of my settings and workflow. So, yeah, so before all of these changes, I was using a program called OBS for screen recording, and that program loved to use the CPU. The problem is that City Skylines also loves to use the CPU, so if you actually watch back in the last episode, toward the end of it, you'll see that there were frames getting dropped and the video was actually kind of lagging behind, and that's because the CPU was getting so overworked that it just couldn't keep up. So, now I am going to be able to use a program called Shadow Play, which is built in with the uh, NVIDIA graphics card that I have in the system, and this is going to produce a lot better results. So the files are going to be bigger, but it's okay because now I have the space. So if you want to look up more technicalities on all that kind of, uh, on the programs that I use and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure you can look them up or just ask me, and uh, we, I might do something with that later. But yeah, so more uh, better better quality in the live portions of the video but uh yes i'm looking forward to using this new workflow toward the future and it's definitely going to help me out a bunch but let's get back into northern valley you've seen so far i went down the main strip of road and i was placing some really cool little i guess growth beds i don't know if that's the right term but the little uh, planters if you will down the middle of the strip i think these add quite a bit to this area and it looks it looks better it looks like there's purpose in the medians that are <laughs> that we put down now so instead of just cement being there and just kind of being like a barren wasteland, there's now actually some, I guess, life, for lack of a better term. There are plants there, and somebody would have to, I guess, tend to them at certain points in the year. So it just looks like the city has something that somebody is taking care of, I guess. And like I've said many times before in this series, if you can get your city to look alive even without making the game run you've done a really good job with this game so everything that we're trying to do in this city is to give it that little bit of life but anyway the building that I am now working around is the I think ends up being the third tallest building in the city uh, we'll check that out in the live portion but yeah again I'm just trying to add some uh, little parking and stuff around these buildings just to give it a little bit more, I guess, realism. I mean, in real cities, you'll see parking thrown everywhere. It's just, it's such a, a, a rich commodity to have a parking lot that you can even charge like boatloads of money to have people park in for like sporting events and stuff. But yeah, parking is always at a premium in downtown areas. And it really, in this game, it you can fill quite a lot of space with just par parking lots. And uh, yeah, that's what we tried to do. And a lot of the time lapse, I actually recorded four hours of footage. That is an insane amount of footage for me to <laughs> to have recorded. But yeah, um, I went through four hours worth of uh, building and uh, a lot of it's detailing. I mean, we really didn't cover a huge area, which has been a popular theme throughout the last couple episodes. But yeah, didn't really cover a lot of area, but. The stuff that we did do in this episode was a lot of detail work, so there's a lot of intricate stuff going on here. And a lot of the times, it's just placing buildings and then filling in the gaps in between it to make it look not so just thrown together. But uh, what I'm doing right now was actually suggested in the comments in the last episode, I believe, and that is putting a, a roundabout down in the uh, on the main road of the downtown area. This was, it was brought to my attention that this is going to be probably really crowded and just an intersection there was probably not going to be really uh, a good idea. So I agreed and of course I have to go through and make a roundabout and this took a few tries. I mean a couple iterations here but 
uh, after a little while, we do end up getting this kind of completed. And I, I need to find something to do in the middle of it. It's just like the interchange that I did on the other side of the map. I really don't know what to put in the middle of that. Um, just to make it look good. I mean, I don't have any statue props or anything, but I think I should probably try to find those. I, it's kind of hard to find specific things in the workshop sometimes, but, uh, yeah, I gotta find something for that. If anybody has any suggestions, please let me know in the comments, but, uh, <laughs> right now, uh, we're going ahead and placing a couple more skyscrapers down here, and I think one of these is actually the one I just placed down with the couple spires on the top. Uh, I believe that was suggested in the last episode by somebody who thought that it would fit perfectly in the downtown area that we're trying to create, and it does. It really does. I had a lot of good suggestions that, uh, or just comments in general, that kind of said this city kind of feels like, uh... Grand Rapids in Michigan just with the way all of the like gr uh, the green space in the city is and I have never been to Grand Rapids so I had to look it up I, I mean obviously I knew it was a city but uh, I had to look up some pictures and I'd agree it, it really does there's a really weird resemblance going on there and it's kind of cool actually but I believe the building that I had that I was just talking about uh, was in I think Nashville is where that actual building is in real life but it also fits really well down here and I love when you guys can suggest things to put into like the city like just an asset hey look this up check it out and of course I'll go check it out and if it fits I'm gonna put it in it's pretty awesome but uh, okay so we have been working on the school district now in the last episode I had uh, worked on the schools or no I had just placed them down just because we needed some services around the area just to get things to grow and uh, get all those new buildings moved in. But I had said that it's not the permanent area, but or permanent place for those. But now they have finally found a permanent resting place. And even so, it's kind of a it's kind of a strange spot. I can show you that more in the future in the uh, live portion of this video. But uh, yeah, going through like these time lapses. I really realize how, I guess, my creative process evolves. I mean, I tend to jump around a ton in designing, like, in City Skylines specifically. Like, you saw me place the schools at one point and then go do something else and then place or come back and work on the schools some more. And it just, it's kind of what happens, I think, is I'll be going through and trying to find a prop to put in a specific spot. And then I'll find something else. I'm like, ooh, I want to use that in the city. So I end up going away from whatever I was doing and placing the prop somewhere in the downtown area or whatever on the map. And then uh, coming back and just kind of, it's its like a weird process that I've noticed. And actually, speaking of my, my own tendencies, I have discovered that I have a pretty weird obsession with, I don't know if obsession is the word, but I use a lot of the same props, like once I've used them and I like them, for whatever reason, I just end up using a lot of the same things. So it gets a little repetitive. You can actually see that with the all of the, the conifer trees that we have in the city so far. There's um, there's quite a few, but I tr I'm trying to get away from that. Like I noticed that habit and I do want to break away from that and try to kind of have a new mentality. I want to kind of think of each little unique property within the city as just that, their own unique property. So I kind of want different flair to be going on in different areas of the city. Like if someone had moved in and a property manager or whatever, a company owns a plot of land, they're going to put their own kind of flair or theming into that area. So I do want to kind of think like that, which is kind of weird if you really think about it. Like, I am one person, but I'm trying to get into, like, a role play of being different people and how would I have designed this versus how would somebody else maybe design this and then try to take, like, a difference sometimes. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, if you're following along, uh, I hope you are because I don't know how else to explain it. But uh, what we're doing right now is putting down, well, what we just did was put down a kind of central public transportation hub. This, I think, is the first one in the city um, so far, but we have not really done any public transportation in this city just yet. We really need to do that because a lot of the buildings grow 
like, a ton once you just put, like, a bus line in. But, um, yeah, we're gonna have to do that. I haven't actually placed any bus lines down, and come to think of it, I haven't done any of the metro lines just yet, either. So, we're gonna have to do some of that, and eventually we're gonna have to think about train lines, and probably our own airport, although I'm not really sure where we're gonna put the airport on this map, but... Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to it, but for now, we do have the bus depot down and the taxi depot, which is actually sending out taxis, even though there are no taxi stands, but yes, I mean, um, anyway, let's move on to what we're doing right now, and that is putting a nice little plaza down here in this kind of high-rise area. I had ended up putting this road, this little square down, uh, just to get a couple buildings oriented the correct way that I thought fit the city and I figured since there's already two buildings down here let's kind of turn this into like a plaza and I ended up going through and actually putting that brick decal down that you just saw me working on and that was because that one building kind of has like a red influence in it so I wanted to kind of stick with like an influence from that building it kind of goes back to what I was saying with the property and designing each property uniquely. But uh, yeah, that whole plaza, I think we're probably gonna wanna come up with a name for this. And uh, maybe we'll name a couple more buildings in the live portion of this video. But uh, you see me jumping back to the school now and doing a little more detail work. We actually, I actually end up detailing a lot more around the school, but I think I cut that out. Like I said, I had four hours worth of footage to put into this time lapse, so I did want to kind of not bore, bore you guys with a lot of the stuff, like placing cars down around the city and a couple other little things that aren't really interesting to watch. I mean, if I, I want to do, I want to put things into this time lapse that are kind of interesting. Like if I had an interesting thought process behind something, I definitely want that involved in the time lapse. But if it's just I, I needed to detail this area just because it needed something, it's not all that interesting. But um, yeah, it, it is definitely part of the city. So we'll go through and actually look at most of the stuff that I ended up doing. But um, yeah, some of it does get cut out of these time lapses. But <laughs> um, anyway, what we're doing right now is kind of just finishing up this area. And like I said, in between buildings, it's crucial to have something going on. You can't just have grass. And a lot of people, if they're like, oh, I really suck at city skylines, a lot of the times it's because you're just going to place a building and that's going to be that, you know? This, this game, it's really weird. Like, it's not up close and personal with each property, but it's not like a, a really large scale, like, transportation game like Open TTD would be if you've ever played that. Um, it's kind of in between, so you want to focus on detail, you want to get down to the nitty gritty, like zoom in as close as possible, place props down, place plants down, make it look like somebody went out there and placed each of these bushes, you know? And that'll give a whole new life to each and every one of your cities. And it's, it's just, it's, it makes the difference, it really does. And like I said, I've, I, huge proponent of, if you can put the game in pause, and it looks like the city is alive, you've done a really good job. But, uh, yeah, like I said, in between buildings is just, it's kind of a pain to get done, like, right, you know? I try to, I'm just trying to put as much parking in between areas as possible, because it's definitely needed, and it's definitely what real cities have, but it, it is so tedious, especially when you want to go back and actually place cars down in the parking lots, it's just, it takes forever to do, but in the end, it really is worth it. All right, there's one last thing in this time lapse that I wanna talk about, and that is what I'm doing currently on the screen. So, a lot of the times when there's concrete down, the surface painter tool doesn't really do it justice. Like, you can't just delete some of the concrete without it looking kinda weird. So, I'll, actually, you know what? The time lapse is kinda coming to an end. We'll start off right here in the live portion, and I will explain kind of more of what I'm just doing right now. All right, guys, here we are live in the city, which is now called, ready? Lockwood. I really fell in love with this name for whatever reason, and I hope a majority of you guys like it too. It just, it seems like a city that would be on two rivers on a bay. Lockwood, you know, locks in a river. Um, 
that's pretty much it. I don't know. It just sounds like a city name, and it sounds like it would be this city's name. But uh, if you if your name was not used, don't worry. I actually got a lot of really good names for things in this episode, or in the last episode's comments. So I've actually written a couple down that I do want to actually use coming up. So uh, don't worry. And uh, if your name wasn't used, of course, recommend it again later on if we need something else named and it fits. So, uh, the last episode we needed to name this main tower here, and I, I got so many comments to name it Trump Tower. And so, we named it Arcadia Tower, because Trump Tower? Why? He's already got towers. <laughs> Um, Arcadia was a name that was recommended for the city as well, and, uh, I don't think it really fit this city, although it's definitely a really powerful name, which is why I wanted to use it for this tower, so, pretty cool there. I do want to, uh, point out real quick that this building right here on the bay is actually a growable. Like, this is a, I think it's a level 5 now, and it's grown this tall, so... The themes that I have set out for this city definitely have some taller buildings, which is going to be really interesting because as the city kind of grows up and gets like better and the, all of the uh, properties kind of rank up, if you will, the city should grow upward, which is going to be really cool. It's going to be like an organic growth type thing. But let's go back to where the time lapse had ended, and it was on this building right here. So... As you can see, I didn't use planters, although I did use one over here. Um, I didn't use planters over here. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to kind of keep this like a planted area, but I couldn't find a way to get the grass to kind of work with it. So instead, I put these rocks down, and I really, really like how this came out for whatever reason. This looks awesome. It looks like we don't have any like really like flowery or... I, I guess flowers or ground cover growing, but there's just a couple like spare bushes growing out of it. So it, it seems like the kind of thing that would grow out of this kind of rougher, uh, I guess, terrain. So I think this just fits and it, it ends up looking really, really nice. And I also wanted to mention and make note of this right here. Oop, if I can zoom in to find it. These. I got a mod in between episodes, it, it, I forget what it's called right now, but it's something to do with plopping mods on the sides of assets, like you can do in the asset creator in the game. So, I ended up finding a railroad car, and it just looked kind of like, if I, I like put it up on the building, and I was like, wow, this actually looks like a window washing platform. So I just left them there. That looks really cool, and it's something that you don't really see in City Skylines ever. And that is window washing platforms. But I'm really hoping, now that we can place props kind of just out and about, I'm really hoping that we actually get somebody who goes through and makes a prop that is a window washing platform. Pretty cool. Um, Alright, so yeah. I, I, I want to make note that I think Shadowplay is refusing to capture my mouse pointer. So if you're not actually seeing it, uh, I don't know how to fix that. So... I, I, the game does run at a really reasonable FPS right now. It's not at, like, 5 FPS, even with all of my recordings going on. So that's really awesome. So I think we can kind of live without the mouse pointer for now um, until maybe I can find a way to work with that and get it to come back. But uh, anyway, let's move on. Um, this is the plaza that we had really spent a lot of time on. I love this pedestrian bridge. For whatever reason, it's not just like a straight up and down bridge. It's got these like curved little walk surfaces. Walkways, I guess, is a better way to phrase that. And of course, as per your guys' suggestion in a few of the earlier episodes, I've made this bridge a lot lower than the standard for the game. And it, it comes out really nice. I really like how this looks. And this whole thing, just like with the, the kind of curved aspect to these walkways here, it's really awesome. And then... Of course, every time you go over a building, your camera just pings off on it. But, um, yeah, the plaza looks great. And there are actual walkways in the in under this brick. So we are going to have people eventually, probably, maybe, walking around in it. I might have to tweak it a little bit to get them to actually use it as, like, a, a cut-through. But, yeah, there are there is the possibility that people will be using it. I have seen people actually use some of these walkways over here already, which is really awesome. 
again, I really enjoy how this kind of little place kind of plays out. It's not like built on, but it's got some landscaping around it. Like somebody is keeping up with this area and see someone's actually using it right now. I also want to note that I really, really love this combo of these like red bushes and this kind of taller grass. I don't even think this stuff has like a name in the in the menus. I think it's just called like plant number one. But either way, it looks great. The contrast is there and it just it really adds to this area. I love it. Um, let's, I guess, take an overall look if we step back here. This is pretty much our skyline now. This is going to pretty much be it for tall buildings. And really, we only have like three really tall buildings. And then there's a couple just filler buildings. And like, like I said, this one right here with the spires on it, not really all that tall, but it is really unique. So it's still adding to the, to the area, but it's not making this city feel like something that it's not going to be, which is like a mega city. This is always meant, I think, yeah, this, this is always meant to be like a really small, but really culturally based city, I think, if that's a good way to describe it. Um, anyway, yeah, I guess, you know what, we can probably end up naming this tower specifically, because I did want to get this in, and it is in the historical part of downtown. Uh, I'm not really sure what we should name it, so you guys can let me know in the comments, and I do want to name this kind of plaza, and maybe just like the third, or the, actually, I get yeah, technically the second tallest building. And you know what? With that spire on the top, it may even be taller than the Arcadia Arcadia Tower, I believe. Yeah. Um, anyway, a couple more names for you guys to put in the comments. So get your uh, thinking caps on. Let's come over to, you know what? The bus depot first. I like how this kind of came out. I talked about this a lot Um Maybe I didn't, uh, but yeah, this is going to be our central hub for our buses and taxis so far. I kind of want to put maybe some more taxi depots around the city just because I'd love to see more and more taxis in this city. Uh, yeah, so for right now, taxis are, are, are the only public transportation in this city. We don't have a lot. We actually don't have any other public transportation yet. The bus depot is here and it is ready to be used so we should probably do that in the next episode i'm not sure i'm not sure if i should do that in the time lapse or in, during like the live portion so i guess maybe you guys can let me know um but yeah moving on this is the school over here uh we have a high school and we have an elementary school and of course we have like the grounds all kind of laid out and if you kind of come over the bridge from the little island behind us here. If you come over the bridge, you see the school straight away. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I feel like maybe people would expect to see taller buildings, but instead they're seeing a school. But you know what? That's part of the character, you know? And then, of course, coming from the main bridge over here, you can see it from the roundabout, which is currently blank. We do need to kind of figure out something to do with it. So once again, I'm looking for some kind of suggestions from you guys in regards to the roundabout, but I like how this kind of ground has a bunch of stuff going on. So, really unique. I put these, like, new lights that I found that I had downloaded in for the tennis courts. Really interesting lights. I love those. And I also really like the basketball court over here. It actually has somebody playing basketball, which is cool, but it also has some really cool lights going on. I have, I guess I downloaded, like, a collection of of lights and I need to start going through those and using them because they are actually really cool some of them so I just a lot of times I don't know what I have at my disposal because I download so many props like thinking this is gonna be awesome and then I completely forget about them but I do need to get better at that but uh, I do like how some of the kids can come through the little grounds through the tennis court and then get make their way out of the I guess school and this I Okay, so I debated putting, like, an elevated walkway around this roundabout. I put a couple different iterations of it in, but it just, it felt crowded. For whatever reason, I liked being able to, like, drive up to this roundabout and not having it obstructed, like, with something over top. It's just got such a beautiful view of, like, the mountains in the background. 
and the walkways over the top of them kind of kind of were a little weird to me so I ended up just putting the walkway out flat but that does mean that we're gonna have a bunch of kids walking across this extremely busy intersection so uh, I don't know if there's a really good solution for this but then again we're not using the rush hour mod in this playthrough so it's not like we're gonna have a bunch of kids walking around at the at the same time uh, I don't know um, food for thought I guess uh, okay, so right in front of the school is, I think, commercial uh, district right now. There's just low or high density commercial. I I tried to like find like in real cities you'll have kind of buildings that are commercial down low, and then up up top maybe there's offices or maybe there's residencies. So it's kind of hard to do that in this in this game. So I was trying to kind of focus. And have, I guess if I go to this, I, I wanted to have kind of areas where there'd be commercials. So, around the bus depot, there's a bunch of, like, commercial. Um, it's kind of like you could park around the bus area and just walk to a store. But then there's just pockets of a lot of housing and, like, apartment complexes. And then it kind of, you'll just find strips of commercial. It's kind of the way I'm trying to combat not being able to put commercial and uh, residential all in the same kind of thing. But, yeah, moving forward, I do kind of want to keep that in mind. I'm not sure if there's really a good solution for that, but I just want to kind of keep it logic logical. Um, anyway, let's move on to, I think, one of the last things we should talk about, and that is this little kind of riverfront area, little riverfront property with actually kind of a cool building with a little walk through, uh, I don't even know what you would call that, hallway, atrium? It's not really an atrium, but yeah, this is kind of a cool little area. I was kind of finishing up the rest of what I did in this episode, and then I kind of stepped back and I looked at what we had going on, and I was like, you know what, this city is, is fairly flat, but it's kind of tall as opposed to the river level. So I decided to go through with the terrain tool and just kind of take a little portion of it down and then use some like of the rocks and bushes and all that kind of stuff and kind of just detail out this little uh, cove. Is that really the right word? It might be. But it's just a small little area that I guess we've developed into a little bit of a riverfront housing project. So kind of interesting. And then, of course, I had to put the fences around it because... It's dangerous to drive cars and trucks through here, and uh, if you flew off it being reckless driving or whatever, it, it just wouldn't end well for you. But, alright, so I guess this is the point in the episode. Oh, you know what, before that, I did want to talk about the Lighthouse Island. Now, I really didn't go through and do all that much to what we did in the previous episode. And because of that, not really anything has changed from it. So I do need to actually go through and do this, but we have named this island the Winstonley Isle. Uh, it's really cool. I guess Winstonley was a, the, I guess, founder or the father of kind of the modern lighthouse design, kind of like this black and white lighthouse. So I guess he kind of engineered it. So as kind of a tribute, I kind of placed that down. I am kind of a sucker for history. But uh, we we end up naming that, and I love just... You guys are awesome. A lot of you guys don't only comment with, like, the name of something, but also the, like, reasoning behind it. And if history is involved, I'm just kind of a sucker for it. Uh, I'm not saying that hist historical names are always going to trump whatever uh, the other names were, but, yeah. Um, we do need to kind of fix this, and I think... I might be taking out the old lighthouse because it does. It did seem like there were a lot of comments that said two lighthouses on this island are kind of ridiculous, and I kind of tend to agree with that. But, yeah. So, I guess I'll rework that, I promise, for the next episode. And then maybe I have to go through and do a little bit more, like, in just areas where there's not much going on right now. Probably have to add some more detailing and that kind of stuff to those areas. And then, of course, finishing out this downtown area. So, all of the high density, I believe, is going to kind of end at this kind of main road over here. This is going to be the end of the high density, and then past that, we're going to get more toward the low density, but, like, still 
very compact housing. And I'm actually looking forward to that as well. And I think I need to probably go through in the next episode and actually add a metro system to this city because so far we really don't have any. So, yeah, that's kind of a couple big things going on in the next episode. You guys are going to help me name either the plaza right here or just this main tall tower. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. No, it's just a very unique tower. And then, of course, this other kind of, I guess, historical tower, even though it's not really a historical building in terms of design, I guess, but... It's in the historical district, so I guess we'll name it a historical tower. So, guys, that's your mission in the comments. If you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it for whatever reason, thumbs down. I am trying to be much more consistent with uploads moving forward. I feel like I've gotten my uh, all of my computer and workflow kind of in a spot that's really, really conducive to working. So I'm looking forward to doing more videos in the future, and more consistency in the future. So guys, until next time, I'll see you back here in Northern Valley.